What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another preview for you guys today. As soon as we're finished on with a review, looking back at one game, we have to turn around and look to the next game. It is that time of year again. It is December. It is the Christmas period in the world of football. The most dreaded period for managers and football fans alike. And this season, it's only going to be doubly added on because of how cramped the fixture list is. We are looking at around 9 to 10 games within the space of a month. And two periods where we have two games in the space of three days. So guys... Let's sit back, let's get strapped, we've wanted football back, now we're going to be drowned with football and let's just hope our squad can see the other side of it through without, without too many injuries. But we are going to be previewing Chelsea versus Sevilla in this match, or Sevilla versus Chelsea is going to be the reverse fixture this time round. We're going to be talking all things Sevilla-Chelsea, team news, lineups, the way both teams are looking at this game and what the effects of this game could be to both teams to the Champions League group stage and to where each team could be progressing and which teams they could be facing in the last 16. But guys, before we start this review, if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that like button, press that subscribe button and smash that bell notification button as well. And let's go straight into this preview without any more waffle. Frank Lampard and Chelsea are travelling to Sevilla tomorrow for what looks like a straight shootout for top spot in Group E. Both teams are already qualified based on how poor Krasnodar and Renz have been in the entirety of the group stage so far. Both teams are already on 10 points and both teams are looking for a win that's going to guarantee them top spot going into the last game of the group stage, which for Chelsea is at home against Krasnodar. Now, both teams are coming into this game in good form. Chelsea are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions and we've won our last three Champions League games on the bounce. And the last time we won our last four on the bounce, we actually went and won the whole entire thing. So, I mean, if lightning strikes twice, let's hope lightning strikes twice again. But... Sevilla, we also can't underestimate them. Their form has been good in recent times as well. They're unbeaten in their last five games and I think they're also looking at potentially being unbeaten in their last four Champions League games if they get a win against us tomorrow as well. Now, there was barely anything to separate us. There's nothing to separate us in the group right now. And there was barely anything to, se to separate us the last time we played either. Both Chelsea and Sevilla playing out a nil-nil stalemate at Stamford Bridge where Sevilla did dominate the majority of the ball which we did expect going into the match, but Chelsea's defence was resolute. Edouard Mendy popped up with a couple of very good saves from close range, and we kept the score level at 0-0, which does mean if Chelsea can get a score draw and we get a win at Krasnodar, that does mean we escape as group winners as well based on the head-to-head -head record, but a win tomorrow guarantees it. And for Chelsea, we need to get this win, and it's not just in, case, it's not just in the case of finishing top of the group, which we will talk about later on in this preview, but it's about managing the players' fitness, and we need to try and manage the players as well as we can. And in order to do that, we have to put all our cards on the table today and get that win against Sevilla. Because if we do that, we guaranteed as group winners, that game against Krasnodar means absolutely nothing. And that is our only opportunity that we're going to have to rest any players. If we can get a win today, just play the whole under 18s, maybe drop Willie or Kepper and give one of them a game because they might as well. I mean, they're on that much wages. You might as well give them one game to keep them happy. But the only chance we're going to have to have any serious rotation in this squad is going to be that Kresledar game but we have to get the W today in order to do that. This game might be more important than the Tottenham game in my opinion and that is because of the rest that we could have. This Christmas period is going to be so deadly to us. We are looking at around nine games in the space of four and a half weeks. Like I already said earlier in the video we have two periods where we're playing two games in the space of three days. That first period is coming straight after the Krasledar game where we go away to Everton on the 12th and on the 15th we go away to Wolves. Two massive away days against two teams that can get a result against us. So this Krasnodar game has to be pointless to us. If we're going into that Krasnodar game needing a win, needing to get a result, I think we've let ourselves down. Chelsea have the opportunity to finish as group winners for the first time since 2015-16. And after all the stuff that happened last season, I'm sure you lot understand how important it is for us to finish this season as group winners. And with all the young other English sides going into match day five, top of their respective groups, right now, if the season finished and we moved into the knockout stages, our last 16 options would be halved and our only options would be Bayern Munich, which we all know we don't want, Borussia Dortmund, Barcelona and Mönchengladbach. 
And to be honest, with Barcelona and Juventus and Mönchengladbach Real still very tight in their respective groups, it is vital that we finish as group winners. Right now, we need to get out of the last 16. If there is a bigger aim for us in the Champions League, that is our aim to get out of the last 16. Because we struggled to get out of the last 16 since the 13-14 season. And a massive reason for that is because we haven't finished top of our group and we've ended up facing teams like Barcelona, teams like PSG, teams like Bayern Munich, and we have struggled. Now, I'm not saying we're going all out and trying to win the competition. I mean, it would be nice, but I'd like to see us move to the quarterfinals. That's the best sign of progression for this Chelsea side. If we could actually make it past the last 16, because low-key, we've been doing a little bit of an arsenal. The only reason it hasn't been as exposed and mocked so much is because we haven't really been that consistent in the Champions League. We've been in one year, out the other year. In one year, out the other year. This is the first year, I think, since 15-16, where we are in the Champions League for back-to-back -back seasons. And we are meant to be one of the biggest clubs in Europe and one of the best clubs in Europe. And especially on paper, we are looking like one of the best clubs in Europe. So we cannot afford to drop out the last 16 again. We need to push forward to the quarterfinals. Maybe we won't win the entire competition. We will end up facing a tougher team eventually as we continue to go on. But delay it as far as possible because as soon as you get to the quarterfinals, then it's just one or two games until the semifinals. Then as soon as you get to the semifinals, realistically anybody has a chance. There's only another two games to get to the final. And then when you get to the final, it is just one game. you got to just take it a game at a time. I'm sure you guys remember from all the magic and all the low-key terrorism football that we saw in 2012. But guys, we need to try and make it out of the last 16. This is why it's so vital that we do this. This is why this Sevilla match is so vital as well. Because we need to guarantee top spot in Group E. So we get the most favourable opposition as well. Moving on into the team news. And Frank Lampard isn't expected to rotate too heavily with the importance of this match. But, but still expect to see some sort of changes after the Tottenham game. And like we said, with Christmas coming up. And we know the mess that we're about to be looking at in the next few weeks. It makes sense that we have to make a couple of rotations. Frank Lampard's already hinted at Hudson Doy being given more minutes after playing well against Rennes and being dropped against Tottenham. Christian Pulisic and Kai Havertz are also in line to make their returns back to the starting lineup after they coming back with injury and self-isolating in their respective injuries. Thiago Silva may also be rested, but I kind of hope he doesn't because it just doesn't make sense. And honestly, I don't know why we're treating Thiago Silva like he's a paraplegic. He can play more than two games in the space for a week. Give him the run out for 60 minutes and then bench him if you have to. But I think Thiago Silva should start this game. Jorginho is also expected to start as Frank Lampard rotates. And Giroud could potentially also be looking at minutes as well after not featuring against Tottenham towards the f until the final 10 minutes of the match. And with Tammy Abraham's performance against Spurs as well, I'd be surprised if you don't see Giroud have some sort of impact on this sort of game. For Sevilla, Bono's tested positive, so he'll be replaced in goal by Thomas Vachlich. Esquerdo, their main left back, is out injured as well, and Suso has also been carrying a knock going into this game. Moving on into the lineup. This is going to be the lineup that I want to see more compared to the one that Frank Lampard might put out. But we're going to start off with Edouard Mendy in goal. I don't really need to explain too much. Edouard Mendy starts and no one else wants to see anybody else drop in. We know that for one. Reese James starts on the right hand side. It, it could be a good opportunity to rest him, but I'd rather see Aspilicue to start on the left hand side and we rest Ben Chilwell after the performance he had against Rennes, where he started well but continued to fade out of the game as it went along. So I'd like to see Aspilicue to start on the left hand side and us have Reese James on the right hand side instead. Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva start as our two starting centre backs. I don't want to see any changes on that. You can rotate Thiago Silva later on in the game if you need it, if you need it. But with the importance of this game, I wouldn't want to see Thiago Silva rested either so he starts this game too um we've already said Azpilicueta at left back Jorginho starts in the lone DM role because I do think he's going to get those sorts of minutes and we do need to see a good performance from Jorginho I do think Jorginho still has a lot to offer this Chelsea side but I can't really sit there and give this guy praise when his performances don't justify it. Jorginho is good in some areas. In close areas, his tackling is excellent and he can still read a pass well. But it's just as soon as people start running onto him or it starts becoming a leg race or anything like that, where his athleticism just gets exposed. So hopefully we see a, a strong, promising performance from Jorginho in this match. But... We have to wait and see on that one, but I think Jorginho starts his game anyway, so I'm going to put him in. Plus, I do also want to give Kante the rest against Leeds because we're finally facing a pressing side. And I do want to see how he reacts in that lone DM role there. As the two attacking eights, we're going to go for Kai Havertz and Mason Mount. I did want to see Kai Havertz start on a little bit 
uh, later against Tottenham, but he didn't really get given that time. He only got like 10 minutes and there was barely any time to make an impact. So we're going to put him in there as well. And also because I don't really trust Jorginho and Kovacic together in this formation. It hasn't really worked out well for us. So I'm not going to start it now. I'm just going to leave Kovacic on the bench. Maybe bring him on later. But we'll start with Kai Havertz and Mason Mount in midfield. Mason Mount has to start. I think he's a shoe in to start in this midfield now. And after that amazing performance against Rennes as well. Definitely has to start. I, want, I hope he, bring, he continues that momentum in the Champions League. Moving up front, on the right-hand side, we're going to start with, with Callum Hudson-Odoi. The reason why I think Hudson-Odoi is going to start is simple man management. He had his best performance of the entire season against Rennes and didn't even get put in the squad for the Spurs game. I think Callum Hudson-Odoi would see as a massive disrespect to himself if he didn't have some sort of impact in this game against Sevilla and he didn't get some sort of, like, some something given back to him after that sort of performance performance because if you have a performance that good and then you get benched I mean there'd be no wonder if he hands in a transfer request and I want to see him try and build on that momentum and build some more confidence into his game so Hudson Toy starts on the right Timo Vona also starts on the left I think I was a bit more iffy towards giving him a rest in this sort of match, but after speaking to Lawrence in the video we did on his channel yesterday, Timo Werner seems to have a habit of playing a lot of games throughout a season, and I don't know, I think his stamina is actually up to the point where he can play those sorts of games. I think his performance in the game against Rennes was a bit of a confidence issue, but he looked a lot stronger in the Spurs game, so I do want to see if in a much more open game like this Sevilla match, he'll have more of those chances to take those. So, yeah, Timo Werner starts on the left for me, and we're going to start with Olivier Drew up front. I have wanted to see how Olivier Drew and Timo Werner can link up together in a full 90. I do think I'm really excited to see both of them together if they work as well. And also, with Olivier Drew having that amazing performance when he came on against Rennes, it's another thing with man management and with Tammy Abraham's performance against Spurs as well. I can't see Tammy Abraham starting this game. I do think Tammy Abraham needs a rest. I don't think he needs to be dropped, but I think he needs a rest in this sort of game. So we're going to go with Olivier Giroud. Score prediction, I'm going to go for a... It's going to be another tight 2-1 game for me. Both teams need this win. It's going to be a massive game for both sides. I see both of them getting a goal, but I see Chelsea scraping it. Guys, this is the end of my preview for Sevilla versus Chelsea. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the Chelsea.